everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. And I'll go ahead and uh, tell you that all three of them make an appearance in this video. I'm going to attach some spinning, um, some footage of me spinning, uh, and um, I thought it would be cute to have the animals in the background and they have some cu pretty cute stuff happening. So. Um, like, like I always do, I'll have timestamps in the down bar with sort of an outline. So if you want to check that out and see what's coming up or skip to a section, you can. I'll warn you that I don't talk during the spinning or explain exactly what I'm doing. I just wanted to get some footage of the spinning. And, um, yeah, it's not a tutorial. I certainly don't, um, yeah, tell you what I'm doing and stuff like that. So it's mostly just to, um, to show you uh, the spinning that took place for, um, for my fin fleece. So yeah, um, <laughs> before I forget, um, I wanted to talk about what I'm wearing just a little bit. Um, this is my newly finished, um, uh, it's my second Holy Chevrons shawl. I called this, uh, my January light shawl. I thought that was a pretty name. This is all from Green Mountain Spinnery. The yarn is Green Mountain Spinnery, and I'm gonna go into all the details on my um, like regular podcast, my next regular podcast episode. But I thought I'd just mention what I'm wearing, and yeah, I'll tell you guys all about it next time um, on my next podcast. So <laughs> um, another thing that I thought I'd mention is that, I don't know if anybody could tell or not, but I just got my hair cut today. And um, I thought it would be great to record today because I feel like my hair looks so pretty, of course. Um, I haven't had my hair cut in, I don't know, months and months. So it was nice to cut off all of the dead ends. And um, it's always nice when they um, style your hair and everything. So it looks a lot prettier than I feel like it does when I do it. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so... All right, let's get down to business. I finished spinning the entire fin fleece. Um, I hand carded uh, the fleece into Rolags, and I just released that video. So, um, you know, if you haven't seen that, you can check that out. Um, and then I spun uh, pretty much long draw, and um, I'm pretty new to spinning long draw. And um, yeah, so <laughs> I certainly didn't want to like give advice or anything like that because I feel like I've just barely gotten the hang of it myself but and I think it might be some sort of modified long draw I think there are different types of long draw um, there's a supported long draw and I think there's like a double draft and things like that and I don't really know enough to say what I'm doing um, so yeah I just wanted to um, try to make the I only had a one and a half pound fleece and I'm going to show my finished yarn in a second. I only had a one and a half pound fleece, so I wanted to get as much out of it as I could. And I was pretty frugal with the wool. And um, yeah, I just tried to um, keep as much of it as I could. Of course, there are bits that you have to get rid of, second cuts and pieces that are too short and um, stuff you know, stuff that you don't want in your yarn. But I tried to um, keep as much of it as I could. And um, and then I also wanted the yarn to go as far as, as it could, spinning-wise. So um, by hand carding it and then spinning it long draw, um, I'm going to get a, I, well, I got a lighter, airier yarn. And um, I think with worsted, you know, you're, you're, you're condensing the yarn down and so you <clears throat> you um yeah if you want to have more yardage then then you could spin woolen and um with a worsted spin it's going to be heavier and denser and um yeah your yardage will be shorter so anyways that was kind of uh the thought process behind trying to spin for a woolen yarn was that um, I really wanted to see if I could get a sweater out of the little bit of fleece that I had, which um, I don't know. We'll have to see um, if I'm if I'm going to be able to manage that. But but yeah, I thought I would certainly try, and then you know, uh, worst case, I could make a really beautiful shawl or something like that. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm super excited to start knitting with that. I really, really have been just dying. 
to play with it and um, but I had to like hold hold my horses because I wanted to show it off before I start um, winding them into cakes and, um, and you know swatching and playing with it so anyways so I'll show you the very first spin that I did was this dark chocolate so this is the darkest color in the fleece and yeah, if you don't know all the details about this, um, I do have um, part one of this series, my Fleece to FO series, um, goes into detail about um, this fleece and everything. I just don't want to sound like a broken record and say the same things over and over again, because some people already know what I'm talking about. And um, so yeah, if you're interested in more details about this, check out part one or some of the other videos that I've made. So yeah, this is my fin fleece. I got it at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. This is from a sheep named Buddy, and um, the farm is in uh, Vermont. And the farmer, her name, the shepherdess, her name is Katie. I'd love to go meet Katie, actually. Um, anyways, and this uh, is from a sheep named Buddy, and he was a ram lamb. And so he had um, a bunch of natural colors in his fleece. And this was the darkest color. So this is the chocolate, really rich, beautiful chocolate color. I love this. This is the first um, spin that I did. And then, so I went darkest to lightest. So then I spun this one, which is maybe a hair lighter than a charcoal gray. But yeah, kind of close to a charcoal gray. And it has this beautiful natural heathering just from... The natural variations um, you know in the wool very pretty and so that's the first two and then the last three I'll go ahead and show together the last three are all this um, kind of gray and what I did was I sorted the wool um, by color as best as I could and then um, yeah hand carded it trying to keep the colors separate so that I could form a gradient. So this is the darkest gray color. And then this was, these two were supposed to be one spin and then I decided to um, be a little bit even more nitpicky and pull out the lightest of the light. And so I split this into two. And so this one is ever so slightly lighter than this one. So if I can show these all at the same time, I think you'll be able to see this forms a really really beautiful natural gradient and so these are all from one sheep this is this is the natural colors um, on buddy <laughs> a thin sheep and um, I have been just dying I've been dying to show you these and I've been trying to like keep it under wraps and um, so that that it could be um, you know There'd be no spoilers on Instagram or anything. I've been tempted to like do some Instagram stories and whatnot. Um, if you're wondering, I'm Crafty Garden Sews on Instagram and uh, Crafty Garden Podcast on Instagram, and I have all links and stuff in the down bar. So, so yeah, I've been dying to show these off and to play with them. <laughs> so I had um, a feeling that I haven't had in a while when I finished this first skein. Um, I think I, I haven't been spinning very long. It's been over a year now um, since I started with my really awful beginner drop spindle. Um, and, um, and so I think for me, sometimes I, I'm not as like uh, excited about spins as uh, I used to be because it feels a little bit like... Um, I'm used to it. I've done it. Like, it's not a big deal. It's not very exciting anymore. You know, I feel like I can spin a, a skein of yarn with my eyes closed sometimes. I mean, it might not be the most beautiful or consistent skein, but, you know, I could pop the TV on and, like, not even really look at what I'm doing and have a decent looking skein of yarn. Um, <laughs> so I've just kind of, I feel like I'm not as, like, as proud or as excited about, um, about, you know, just making, just, you know, taking four ounces of really beautiful fiber and spinning it is, is still lovely, but I just didn't have that, like, sense of pride and accomplishment, ac accomplishment, um, 
but I had it with this. I was like overjoyed and just so excited um, about this spin because this was my first time um, taking it from a fleece, you know, a sheep, if you will, to um, to the yarn. And I just felt like so proud because this has been a serious um, investment of my time to do this. And this has taken, it's almost six months ago that I bought the fleece. I bought it at the end of September. And um, yeah, so it's been a long time, uh, a long process, and I've worked on it bit by bit by bit. Um, and um, it's been such a learning experience getting to process and wash a fleece. And um, I remember, so I think I'll be a little bit nostalgic, I think. So um, I, you know, I've been kind of reminiscing, well, not like it was that long ago, but I've been reminiscing a little bit about going to Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. So, and buying my first fleece. So it was my first time going, which is surprising because it's really not that far from me. And um, yeah, I'm just surprised that I've never been before. I'm certainly going this year if I can. Um, and um, anyway, so when I went, I'll tell you honestly, I was nervous. Like I knew I wanted to look at fleeces and I was pretty sure I wanted to buy one, but I'd never bought one before and it seemed scary. And I felt like, you know, maybe I don't know enough or maybe people will judge me and be like, why are you buying a fleece? And um, I don't know, I had all these silly thoughts and I was like really nervous about buying a fleece. Um, and what if I pick the wrong one? What if I pick a bad one? And um, which one do I pick and what kind of wool do I want? And I just, I didn't know a lot of things. I did a teeny bit of research. Um, there were some, there are some videos out, or not videos, like photos and things and blogs where people tell you, um, like levels of vegetable matter. So like, this is okay. Well, this is really good. No vegetable matter to like extreme amounts of vegetable matter. Never, ever buy this, no matter how cheap it is. It's not worth it. <laughs> I saw stuff like that. But anyways, um, so yeah, that was, um, just, this it just, a pleasant memory thinking about like the journey, what that it's taken to get from there to here. And um, I'm dying to like cast on something with this and see if I can get a sweater out of it. I don't know. It might have to be like a three quarter length sweater. I don't know. But I really, really want to make it to, into a sweater. Um, yeah, and I was also thinking about, because um, I've kind of forgotten, but I remember, um, you know, those of you who've been follow, following me for a while will probably remember, I injured my ankle in a martial arts accident. It was a self-inflicted accident. Um, and I went to physical therapy for it and everything. And I was remembering the trip to Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, and I wore my like tall black hunter boots, which are quite heavy. And by the end of the festival, festival, um, I was limping out of the festival back to my car, and I had my husband carry all of my purchases um, because he's he's really sweet, of course. He doesn't care about that kind of stuff, but. Um, but yeah, I remember being in pain trying to like get back to my car because of my injury. And uh, I don't know, um, I, my, my ankles healed a lot since then. I graduated from physical therapy, if you will. Um, it's certainly not 100%, but it's a lot better. And um, I don't know, I just like, I just feel like this, uh, getting to this point, like made me reminisce on that. And I don't know, I just wanted to chat about it, I guess. Okay, so a little bit about the spinning <laughs> details now that I've talked your ear off. Um, <laughs> um, so I made a spinner's control card. This is my spinner's control card. So it just says a little bit of the basic information. Um, some of the stuff I've already said. The plan was for a two-ply, and I got a DK weight. I think initially I wanted a fingering weight, but I was I, it really wanted to be a DK weight, so I just went with it. Um, so a two ply DK weight, it was spun on my Lindrum double treadle, which is the only wheel I have. I spun it on my fast flyer. That's a 15 to one. I think that's the middle whirl. And then I plied it on my jumbo flyer, 
uh, on a nine to one ratio. And um, I just said that I hand carded it into Rolag, split it into four color groups, which I later um, it turned into five. And then I spun it from dark brown to light gray. I spun it Z implied S. Yeah, all of this information is on my Ravelry hand spun project for this uh, spinning project. And um, I'm gonna try and move all of that information and um, all of the photos, because there's a ton of photos um, from there to a project page on Ravelry for whatever I make with this. So yeah, that's that. And I thought I would mention a couple things. Um, so I haven't measured the angle of twist or checked the wraps per inch because each of these is ever so slightly different. They all fall into a DK uh, weight, so yards per pound or um, the grist. So um, grist is another word for yards per pound. And that's um, something that you can calculate. Uh, it's pretty easy. There are, um, there are some examples um, on if you just Google search grist in yards per pound and how to calculate it, um, there are examples and people will tell you how to do that. It's also in this book and I marked the, um, the yards per pound chart that um, Jillian Marino or Marino um, put in this book. So this is her chart and if you look at DK it gives a range for wraps per inch, which it says is um, 13 to 16, and then a knitting gauge, which is 21 to 24 and in 4 inches, and then the yards per pound is 1,000 to uh, 1,400, right there. So all of my uh, five skeins fall in the DK range. Um, I think the brown for some reason is the heaviest. <laughs> Actually, I know why. I, I, um, I got better and better at spinning long draw as I went. <laughs> That's why. Um, <laughs> this one is the heaviest and I think um, this one might be the lightest, which is weird. <laughs> but it, either way, they're all relatively close in uh, yards per pound and um, they're all DK weight. So I think I should be fine. Um, I mean, and it's hand spun, so, it, you know, and I'm not the best at spinning woolen, so it's going to have slight inconsistencies, but, you know, it's hand spun, and um, I don't care. I absolutely love it. Um, so, yeah, I haven't checked the angle of twist. This is my angle of twist card um, that came in my, um, oh, I don't have it right here, in my spinner's book of yarn designs. Um, I'm going to probably try and check some of that later, and I think I might later also check the wraps per inch. I have this cute little hedgehog from Trinkles, but I haven't done any of that yet. Um, I did, you know, measure all of them and calculate the grist, though, and so I think I have um, just over, oh yeah, I have 975 yards, so that's nearly a thousand yards, and... Um, yeah, they're all DK weight. So I think I should be able to um, pretty confidently look at DK weight patterns. So I'm really, really excited about that. And uh, yeah, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut this short. I think I've chatted long enough about it. Um, I think I'm going to start looking at um, what to make with this pretty quickly. I'm super excited just to start playing with these. Um, so hopefully I'll have a video up on that when, um, when I have more to tell you about it. And uh, I'm going to attach some of the spinning that I did. Uh, I think it was for this skein right here that I have in the video. I was making this skein. And uh, yeah, like I said, my two dogs and my cat make an appearance. <laughs> And uh, my cat was playing with my dogs and, or my dog and being adorable. So yeah, you can stick around for that if you want. Um, I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series and I can't wait to show you the next step. Uh, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.
you good boy. I love you. He said, I love you. <laughs> good boy. Oh, good boy. <laughs> such a good